Preface and Prologue of Calculus Made Easy. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Adam. Calculus Made Easy by Sylvanus P. Thompson. What one fool can do, another can. Ancient Simeon Proverb. Preface to the Second Edition The surprising success of this work has led the author to add a considerable number of worked examples and exercises. Advantage has also been taken to enlarge certain parts where experience has shown that further explanations would be useful. The author acknowledges with gratitude many valuable suggestions and letters received from teachers, students, and critics. October 1914 Prologue. Considering how many fools can calculate, it is surprising that it should be thought either a difficult or a tedious task for any other fool to learn how to master the same tricks. Some calculus tricks are quite easy. Some are enormously difficult. The fools who write the textbooks of advanced mathematics, and they are mostly clever fools, seldom take the trouble to show you how easy the easy calculations are. On the contrary, they seem to desire to impress you with their tremendous cleverness by going about it in the most difficult way. Being myself a remarkably stupid fellow, I have had to unteach myself the difficulties, and now beg to present to my fellow fools the parts that are not hard. Master these thoroughly, and the rest will follow. What one fool can do, another can. End of Preface and Prologue Section 1 of Calculus Made Easy. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Adam. Calculus Made Easy by Sylvanus P. Thompson. Chapter 1. To Deliver You from the Preliminary Terrors. The Preliminary Terror, which chokes off most fifth-form boys from even attempting to learn how to calculate can be abolished once for all by simply stating what is the meaning, in common-sense terms, of the two principal symbols that are used in calculating. These dreadful symbols are 1. D, which merely means a little bit of. Thus, DX means a little bit of X, or DU means a little bit of you. Ordinary mathematicians think it more polite to say an element of instead of a little bit of, just as you please, but you will find that all these little bits or elements may be considered to be indefinitely small. 2. The integral symbol, which is merely a long s and may be called, if you like, the sum of. Thus, the integral of dx means the sum of all the little bits of x, or the integral of dt means the sum of all the little bits of t. Ordinary mathematicians call this symbol the integral of. Now, any fool can see that if x is considered to be made up of a lot of little bits, each of which is called dx, if you add them all up together, you get the sum of all the dx's, which is the same thing as the whole of x. The word integral simply means the whole. If you think of the duration of time for one hour, you may, if you like, think of it as cut up into 3600 little bits called seconds. The whole of the 3600 little bits added up together make one hour. When you see an expression that begins with this terrifying symbol, you will henceforth know that it is put there merely to give you instructions that you are now to perform the operation, if you can of totaling up all the little bits that are indicated by the symbols that follow. That's all. End of section 1 Section 2 of Calculus Made Easy This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. 
Calculus Made Easy by Sylvanus P. Thompson On Different Degrees of Smallness We shall find that in our process of calculation we have to deal with small quantities of various degrees of smallness. We shall have also to learn under what circumstances we may consider small quantities to be so minute that we may omit them from consideration. Everything depends upon relative minuteness. Before we fix any rules, let us think of some familiar cases. There are sixty minutes in the hour, twenty-four hours in the day, seven days in the week, and there are therefore fourteen hundred and forty minutes in the day and ten thousand eighty minutes in the week. Obviously, one minute is a very small quantity of time compared with a whole week. Indeed, our forefathers considered it small as compared with an hour, and called it one minute, meaning a minute fraction, namely one sixtieth of an hour. When they came to require still smaller subdivisions of time, they divided each minute into sixty still smaller parts, which in Queen Elizabeth's days they called second minutes i.e. small quantities of the second order of minuteness. And nowadays we call these small quantities of the second order of smallness seconds, but few people know why they are so called. Now if one minute is so small as compared with a whole day, how much smaller by comparison is one second? Again, think of a farthing as compared with a sovereign. It is barely worth more than one thousandth part. A farthing, more or less, is of precious little importance compared with a sovereign. It may certainly be regarded as a small quantity. But compare a farthing with a thousand pounds. Relatively to this greater sum, the farthing is of no more importance than one thousandth of a farthing would be to a sovereign. Even a golden sovereign is relatively a negligible quantity in the wealth of a millionaire. Now, if we fix upon any numerical fraction as constituting the proportion for which any purpose we call relatively small, we can easily state other fractions of a higher degree of smallness. Thus, if, for the purpose of time, one over sixty be called a small fraction, then one over sixty of one over sixty being a small fraction of a small fraction, may be regarded as a small quantity of the second order of smallness. Footnote. The mathematicians talk about the second order of magnitude, i.e., greatness, when they really mean second order of smallness. This is very confusing to beginners. Or if for any purpose we were to take one percent i e one over a hundred as a small fraction then one percent of one percent i e one over ten thousand would be a small fraction of the second order of smallness and one over a million would be a small fraction of the third order of smallness being one percent of one percent of one percent lastly suppose that for some very precise purpose we should regard one over a million as small thus if a first-rate chronometer is not to lose or gain more than half a minute in a year it must keep time with an accuracy of one part in one million fifty one thousand two hundred now if for such a purpose we regard one over a million or one millionth as a small quantity then one over a million of one over a million, that is, one over a billion or one billionth, will be a small quantity of the second order of smallness, and may be utterly disregarded by comparison. Then we see that the smaller a small quantity itself is, the more negligible does the corresponding small quantity of the second order become. Hence we know that in all cases we are justified in neglecting the small quantities of the second or third or higher orders if only we take the small quantity of the first order small enough in itself. But it must be remembered 
that small quantities if they occur in our expressions as factors multiplied by some other factor may become important if the other factor is itself large even a farthing becomes important if only it is multiplied by a few hundred now in the calculus we write dx for a little bit of x these things such as dx and du and dy are called differentials the differential of x or of u or of y as the case may be you read them as dx or du or dy if dx be a small bit of x and relatively small of itself it does not follow that such quantities as x times dx or x squared dx or a to the x power dx are negligible but dx times dx would be negligible being a small quantity of the second order a very simple example will serve as illustration let us think of x as a quantity that can grow by a small amount so as to become x plus dx where dx is the small increment added by growth the square of this is x squared plus 2x times dx plus parentheses dx close parentheses squared the second term is not negligible because it is a first order quantity while the third term is of the second order of smallness being a bit of a bit of x squared thus if we took dx to mean numerically say one over sixty of x then the second term would be two over sixty of x squared whereas the third term would be one over thirty six hundred of x squared this last term is clearly less important than the second but if we go further and take dx to mean only one over a thousand of x then the second term will be two over a thousand of x squared while the third term will be only one over a million of x squared geometrically this may be depicted as follows draw a square the side of which we will take to represent x now suppose the square to grow by having a bit dx added to its size each way the enlarged square is made up of the original square x squared the two rectangles at the top and on the right each of which is of area x times dx or together 2x times dx and the little square at the top right hand corner which is parentheses dx close parentheses squared in figure two we have taken dx as quite a big fraction of x about one fifth but suppose we had taken it only one over a hundred about the thickness of an inked line drawn with a fine pen then the little corner square will have an area of only one over ten thousand of x squared and be practically invisible clearly parentheses dx close parentheses squared is negligible if only we consider the increment dx to be itself small enough let us consider a simile suppose a millionaire were to say to his secretary next week i will give you a small fraction of any money that comes in to me suppose that the secretary were to say to his boy i will give you a small fraction of what i get suppose the fraction in each case to be one over a hundred part now if mr millionaire received during the next week a thousand pounds the secretary would receive ten pounds and the boy two shillings ten pounds would be a small quantity compared with a thousand pounds but two shillings is a small small quantity indeed of a very secondary order but what would be the disproportion if the fraction instead of being one over a hundred had been settled at one over a thousand part then while mr millionaire got his thousand pounds mr secretary would get only one pound and the boy 
less than one farthing. The witty Dean Swift once wrote, So naturalists observe a flea hath smaller fleas that on him prey, and these have smaller fleas to bite em, and so proceed ad infinitum. On Poetry, a Rhapsody, page 20, printed 1733, usually misquoted. An ox might worry about a flea of ordinary size, a small creature of the first order of smallness, but he would probably not trouble himself about a flea's flea, being of the second order of smallness. It would be negligible. Even a gross of fleas' fleas would not be of much account to the ox. End of section two. Section three of Calculus Made Easy. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Calculus Made Easy by Sylvanus P. Thompson on relative growings all through the calculus we are dealing with quantities that are growing and with rates of growth we classify all quantities into two classes constants and variables those which we regard as a fixed value and call constants we generally denote algebraically by letters from the beginning of the alphabet such as a b or c while those which we consider as capable of growing or as mathematicians say of varying we denote by letters from the end of the alphabet such as x y z u v w or sometimes t moreover we are usually dealing with more than one variable at once and thinking of the way in which one variable depends on the other for instance we think of the way in which the height reached by a projectile depends on the time of attaining that height or we are asked to consider a rectangle of given area and to inquire how any increase in the length of it will compel a corresponding decrease in the breadth of it or we think of the way in which any variation in the slope of a ladder will cause the height that it reaches to vary. Suppose we have got two such variables that depend one on the other. An alteration in one will bring about an alteration in the other because of this dependence. Let us call one of the variables x and the other that depends on it y. Suppose we make x to vary. That is to say, we either alter it or imagine it to be altered by adding to it a bit which we call dx. We are thus causing x to become x plus dx. Then, because x has been altered, y will have altered also, and will have become y plus dy. Here, the bit dy may be in some cases positive, in others negative, and it won't, except by a miracle, be the same size as dx. Take two examples. 1. Let x and y be respectively the base and the height of a right-angled triangle, figure 4, of which the slope of the other side is fixed at 30 degrees. If we suppose this triangle to expand, and yet keep its angles the same as at first, then, when the base grows so as to become x plus dx, the height becomes y plus dy. Here, increasing x results in an increase of y. The little triangle, the height of which is dy, and the base of which is dx, is similar to the original triangle, and it is obvious that the value of the ratio dy over dx is the same as that of the ratio y over x. As the angle is 30 degrees, it will be seen that here dy over dx equals 1 over 1.73. 2. Let x represent, in figure 5, the horizontal distance from a wall, 
of the bottom end of a ladder, A, B, of fixed length and let y be the height it reaches up the wall. Now y clearly depends on x. It is easy to see that if we pull the bottom end a a bit further from the wall, the top end b will come down a little lower. Let us state this in scientific language. If we increase x to x plus dx, then y will become y minus dy. That is, when x receives a positive increment, the increment which results to y is negative. Yes, but how much? Suppose the ladder was so long that when the bottom end A was 19 inches from the wall, the top end B reached just 15 feet from the ground. Now, if you were to pull the bottom end out one inch more, how much would the top end come down? Put it all into inches x equals 19 inches, y equals 180 inches. Now the increment of x, which we call dx, is 1 inch, or x plus dx equals 20 inches. How much will y be diminished? The new height will be y minus dy. If we work out the height by Euclid 147, then we shall be able to find how much dy will be. The length of the ladder is the square root of the sum 180 squared plus 19 squared equals 181 inches. Clearly then, the new height, which is y minus dy, will be such that the difference y minus dy squared equals 181 squared minus 20 squared equals 32,761 minus 400 equals 32,361. y minus dy equals the square root of 32,361 equals 179.89 inches. Now y is 180, so that dy is 180 minus 179.89 equals 0.11 inch. So we see that making dx an increase of 1 inch has resulted in making dy a decrease of 0.11 inch and the ratio of dy to dx may be stated thus. dy over dx is equal to negative 0.11 over 1. It is also easy to see that, except in one particular position, dy will be of a different size from dx. Now right through the differential calculus we are hunting, hunting, hunting for a curious thing a mere ratio, namely the proportion which dy bears to dx when both of them are indefinitely small. It should be noted here that we can only find this ratio dy over dx when y and x are related to each other in some way, so that whenever x varies, y does vary also. For instance, in the first example just taken, if the base x of the triangle be made longer, the height y of the triangle becomes greater also. And in the second example, if the distance x of the foot of the ladder from the wall be made to increase, the height y reached by the ladder decreases in a corresponding manner, slowly at first, but more and more rapidly as x becomes greater. In these cases, the relation between x and y is perfectly definite. It can be expressed mathematically, being y over x equals tangent 30 degrees, and x squared plus y squared equals l squared, where l is the length of the latter respectively, and dy over dx has the meaning we found in each case. If, while x is, as before, the distance of the foot of the ladder from the wall, y is, instead of the height reached, the horizontal length of the wall, or the number of bricks in it, 
or the number of years since it was built. Any change in x would naturally cause no change whatever in y. In this case, dy over dx has no meaning whatever, and it is not possible to find an expression for it. Whenever we use differentials dx, dy, dz, etc., the existence of some kind of relation between x, y, z, etc. is implied, and this relation is called a function in x, y, z, etc. The two expressions given above, for instance, namely y over x equals tangent 30 degrees, and x squared plus y squared equals l squared, are functions of x and y. Such expressions contain implicitly, that is, contain without distinctly showing it, the means of expressing either x in terms of y or y in terms of x. And for this reason they are called implicit functions in x and y. They can be respectively put into the forms y equals x times tangent 30 degrees, or x equals y over tangent 30 degrees, and y equals square root of the difference l squared minus x squared, or x equals square root of the difference l squared minus y squared. These last expressions state explicitly, that is distinctly, the value of x in terms of y, or of y in terms of x, and they are for this reason called explicit functions of x or y. For example, x squared plus 3 equals 2y minus 7 is an implicit function in x and y. It may be written y equals the quantity x squared plus 10 over 2, explicit function of x, or x equals square root of the difference to y minus 10, explicit function of y. We see that an explicit function in x, y, z, etc. is simply something the value of which changes when x, y, z, etc. are changing, either one at the time or several together. Because of this, the value of the explicit function is called the dependent variable, as it depends on the value of the other variable quantities in the function. These other variables are called the independent variables, because their value is not determined from the value assumed by the function. For example, if u equals x squared times sine theta, x and theta are the independent variables and u is the dependent variable. Sometimes the exact relation between several quantities x, y, z either is not known, or it is not convenient to state it. It is only known, or convenient to state, that there is some sort of relation between these variables, so that one cannot alter either x, or y, or z singly without affecting the other quantities. The existence of a function in x, y, z is then indicated by the notation capital F of x, y, z, implicit function, or by x equals capital F of y and z, y equals capital F of x and z, or z equals capital F of x and y, explicit function. Sometimes the letter lowercase f, or phi, is used instead of uppercase f, so that y equals uppercase f of x, y equals lowercase f of x, and y equals phi of x, all mean the same thing, namely, that the value of y depends on the value of x in some way which is not stated. We call the ratio dy over dx the differential coefficient of y with respect to x. It is a solemn scientific name for this very simple thing. But we are not going to be frightened by solemn names when the things themselves are so easy. 
instead of being frightened we will simply pronounce a brief curse on the stupidity of giving long crack-jaw names and having relieved our minds we'll go on to the simple thing itself namely the ratio dy over dx in ordinary algebra which you learned at school you were always hunting after some unknown quantity which you called x or y or sometimes there were two unknown quantities to be hunted for simultaneously you have now to learn to go hunting in a new way the fox being now neither x nor y instead of this you have to hunt for this curious cub called dy over dx the process of finding the value of dy over dx is called differentiating but remember what is wanted is the value of this ratio when both dy and dx are themselves indefinitely small the true value of the differential coefficient is that to which it approximates in the limiting case when each of them is considered as infinitesimally minute let us now learn how to go in quest of dy over dx note to chapter three how to read differentials it will never do to fall into the schoolboy error of thinking that dx means d times x for d is not a factor it means an element of or a bit of whatever follows one reads dx thus d x in case the reader has no one to guide him in such matters it may here be simply said that one reads differential coefficients in the following way the differential coefficient dy over dx is read dy by dx or dy over dx so also du over dt is read du by dt second differential coefficients will be met with later on they are like this d superscript 2 y over d x superscript 2 which is read d2y over dx squared and it means that the operation of differentiating y with respect to x has been or has to be performed twice over another way of indicating that a function has been differentiated is by putting an accent to the symbol of the function thus if y equals capital f of x which means that y is some unspecified function of x see page 13 we may write capital f prime of x instead of d capital f of x over dx similarly capital f double prime of x will mean that the original function capital f of x has been differentiated twice over with respect to x end of section three Section 4 of Calculus Made Easy. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Calculus Made Easy by Sylvanus P. Thompson. Simplest Cases. Now, let us see how, on first principles, we can differentiate some simple algebraical expression. Case 1. Let us begin with the simple expression y equals x squared. Now remember that the fundamental notion about the calculus is the idea of growing. Mathematicians call it varying. Now as y and x squared are equal to one another, it is clear that if x grows, x squared will also grow. And if x squared grows, then y will also grow. What we have got to find out is the proportion between the growing of y and the growing of x. In other words, our task is to find out the ratio between dy and dx, or, in brief, to find the value of dy over dx. Let x, then, grow a little bit bigger and become x plus dx. Similarly, y will grow a bit bigger and will become y plus dy. 
then clearly it will still be true that the enlarged y will be equal to the square of the enlarged x writing this down we have y plus dy equals the quantity x plus dx squared doing the squaring we get y plus dy equals x squared plus 2x times dx plus dx squared what does dx squared mean remember that dx meant a bit a little bit of x then dx squared will mean a little bit of a little bit of x that is as explained above page four it is a small quantity of the second order of smallness it may therefore be discarded as quite inconsiderable in comparison with the other terms leaving it out we then have y plus dy equals x squared plus two x times dx now y equals x squared so let us subtract this from the equation and we have left dy equals 2x times dx dividing across by dx we find dy over dx equals 2x now this is what we set out to find note this ratio dy over dx is the result of differentiating y with respect to x differentiating means finding the differential coefficient suppose we had some other function of x as for example u equals 7x squared plus 3 then if we were told to differentiate this with respect to x we should have to find du over dx or what is the same thing d the quantity 7x squared plus 3 over dx on the other hand we may have a case in which time was the independent variable see page 14 such as this y equals b plus the fraction one half a t squared then if we were told to differentiate it that means we must find its differential coefficient with respect to t so that then our business would be to try to find dy over dt that is to find d the quantity b plus the fraction one half a t squared over d t end of note the ratio of the growing of y to the growing of x is in the case before us found to be two x numerical example suppose x equals one hundred and therefore y equals ten thousand then let x grow till it becomes 101 that is let dx equal 1 then the enlarged y will be 101 times 101 equals 10201 but if we agree that we may ignore small quantities of the second order one may be rejected as compared with 10000 so we may round off the enlarged y to 10,200. y has grown from 10,000 to 10,200. The bit added on is dy, which is therefore 200. dy over dx equals 200 over 1 equals 200. According to the algebra working of the previous paragraph, we find dy over dx equals 2x. And so it is, for x equals 100 and 2x equals 200. But, you will say, we neglected a whole unit. Well, try again, making dx a still smaller bit. Try dx equals the fraction 1 tenth. Then x plus dx equals 100.1 and the quantity x plus dx squared equals 100.1 times 100.1 equals 10,020.01. Now the last figure 1 is only one millionth part of the 10,000 and is utterly negligible. 
so we may take ten thousand twenty without the little decimal at the end and this makes dy equals twenty and dy over dx equals twenty over point one equals two hundred which is still the same as two x case two try differentiating y equals x cubed in the same way we let y grow to y plus dy while x grows to x plus dx then we have y plus dy equals the quantity x plus dx cubed doing the cubing we obtain y plus dy equals x cubed plus 3x squared times dx plus 3x times dx squared plus dx cubed now we know that we may neglect small quantities of the second and third orders since when dy and dx are both made indefinitely small dx squared and dx cubed will become indefinitely smaller by comparison so regarding them as negligible we have left y plus dy equals x cubed plus 3x squared times dx but y equals x cubed and subtracting this we have dy equals 3x squared times dx and dy over dx equals 3x squared case 3 try differentiating y equals x raised to the fourth power starting as before by letting both y and x grow a bit we have y plus dy equals the quantity x plus dx raised to the fourth power working out the raising to the fourth power we get y plus dy equals x raised to the fourth power plus 4x cubed times dx plus 6x squared times dx squared plus 4x times dx cubed plus dx raised to the fourth power then striking out the terms containing all the higher powers of dx as being negligible pi comparison we have y plus dy equals x raised to the fourth power plus 4x cubed times dx subtracting the original y equals x to the fourth power we have left dy equals 4x cubed times dx and dy over dx equals 4x cubed now all these cases are quite easy let us collect the results to see if we can infer any general rule put them in two columns the values of y in one and the corresponding values found for dy over dx in the other thus when y is x squared dy over dx is 2x when y is x cubed dy over dx is 3x squared when y is x raised to the fourth power dy over dx is 4x cubed just look at these results the operation of differentiating appears to have had the effect of diminishing the power of x by one for example in the last case reducing x raised to the fourth power to x cubed and at the same time multiplying by a number the same number in fact which originally appeared as the power now when you have once seen this you might easily conjecture how the others will run you would expect that differentiating x raised to the fifth power would give 5x raised to the fourth power or differentiating x raised to the sixth power would give 6x raised to the fifth power if you hesitate try one of these and see whether the conjecture comes right try y equals x raised to the fifth power then y plus dy equals the quantity x plus dx raised to the fifth power equals x raised to the fifth power plus 5x raised to the fourth power times dx plus 10x cubed times dx squared plus 10x squared times dx cubed 
plus 5x times dx raised to the fourth power plus dx raised to the fifth power. Neglecting all the terms containing small quantities of the higher orders we have left. y plus dy equals x raised to the fifth power plus 5x raised to the fourth power times dx. And subtracting y equals x raised to the fifth power leaves us dy equals 5x raised to the fourth power times dx. Whence dy over dx equals 5x raised to the fourth power exactly as we supposed. Following out logically our observation, we should conclude that if we want to deal with any higher power, call it n, we could tackle it in the same way. Let y equal x raised to the n power. Then we should expect to find that dy over dx equals n x raised to the n minus 1 power. For example, let n equal 8. Then y equals x raised to the 8th power. And differentiating it would give dy over dx equals 8x raised to the 7th power. And indeed, the rule that differentiating x raised to the n power gives, as the result, n x raised to the n minus 1 power is true for all cases where n is a whole number and positive. Expanding the quantity x plus dx raised to the n power by the binomial theorem will at once show this. But the question whether it is true for cases where n has negative or fractional values requires further consideration. Case of a negative power. Let y equal x to the minus 2. Then proceed as before. y plus dy equals the quantity x plus dx to the minus 2 equals x to the minus 2 times the quantity 1 plus dx over x to the minus 2. Expanding this by the binomial theorem, see page 137, we get equals x to the minus 2 times the quantity 1 minus 2 dx over x plus 2 times the quantity 2 plus 1 over 1 times 2. That fraction times the quantity dx over x squared minus etc. equals x to the minus 2 minus 2x to the minus 3 times dx plus 3x to the minus 4 times dx squared minus 4x to the minus 5 times dx cubed plus etc. So neglecting the small quantities of higher orders of smallness we have y plus dy equals x to the minus 2 minus 2x to the minus 3 times dx. Subtracting the original y equals x to the minus 2, we find dy equals negative 2x to the minus 3 times dx. dy over dx equals negative 2x to the minus 3. And this is still in accordance with the rule inferred above. Case of a fractional power. Let y equal x to the one-half. Then, as before, y plus dy equals the quantity x plus dx to the one-half equals x to the one-half times the quantity 1 plus dx over x to the one-half equals the square root of x plus one-half times dx over the square root of x minus one-eighth 
times dx squared over x times the square root of x plus terms with higher powers of dx. Subtracting the original y equals x to the one-half and neglecting higher powers, we have left dy equals one-half times dx over the square root of x equals one-half x to the minus one-half times dx and dy over dx equals one-half x to the minus one-half. Agreeing with the general rule. Summary. Let us see how far we have got. We have arrived at the following rule. To differentiate x raised to the n power, multiply by the power and reduce the power by one, so giving us n x raised to the n minus one power as the result. End of section four. Section four of Calculus Made Easy. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Calculus Made Easy by Sylvanus P. Thompson. Simplest Cases. Now, let us see how, on first principles, we can differentiate some simple algebraical expression. Case 1. Let us begin with the simple expression y equals x squared. Now remember that the fundamental notion about the calculus is the idea of growing. Mathematicians call it varying. Now as y and x squared are equal to one another, it is clear that if x grows, x squared will also grow. And if x squared grows, then y will also grow. What we have got to find out is the proportion between the growing of y and the growing of x. In other words, our task is to find out the ratio between dy and dx, or, in brief, to find the value of dy over dx. Let x, then, grow a little bit bigger and become x plus dx. Similarly, y will grow a bit bigger and will become y plus dy. Then, clearly, it will still be true that the enlarged y will be equal to the square of the enlarged x. Writing this down, we have y plus dy equals the quantity x plus dx squared. Doing the squaring, we get y plus dy equals x squared plus 2x times dx plus dx squared. What does dx squared mean? Remember that dx meant a bit, a little bit, of x. Then dx squared will mean a little bit of a little bit of x. That is, as explained above, page 4, it is a small quantity of the second order of smallness. It may therefore be discarded as quite inconsiderable in comparison with the other terms. Leaving it out, we then have y plus dy equals x squared plus 2x times dx. Now y equals x squared, so let us subtract this from the equation and we have left dy equals 2x times dx. Dividing across by dx, we find dy over dx equals 2x. Now this is what we set out to find. Note, this ratio dy over dx is the result of differentiating y with respect to x. Differentiating means finding the differential coefficient. Suppose we had some other function of x, as for example, u equals 7x squared plus 3. Then, if we were told to differentiate this with respect to x, we should have to find du over dx, or, what is the same thing, d, the quantity 7x squared plus 3, over dx. On the other hand, 
we may have a case in which time was the independent variable see page fourteen such as this y equals b plus the fraction one half a t squared then if we were told to differentiate it that means we must find its differential coefficient with respect to t so that then our business would be to try to find dy over dt that is to find d the quantity b plus the fraction one half a t squared over dt end of note the ratio of the growing of y to the growing of x is in the case before us found to be two x numerical example suppose x equals one hundred and therefore y equals ten thousand then let x grow till it becomes one hundred and one that is let dx equal one then the enlarged y will be one hundred and one times one hundred and one equals ten thousand two hundred and one but if we agree that we may ignore small quantities of the second order one may be rejected as compared with ten thousand so we may round off the enlarged y to ten thousand two hundred y has grown from ten thousand to ten thousand two hundred the bit added on is dy which is therefore two hundred dy over dx equals two hundred over one equals two hundred according to the algebra working of the previous paragraph we find dy over dx equals two x and so it is for x equals one hundred and two x equals two hundred but you will say we neglected a whole unit well try again making dx a still smaller bit try dx equals the fraction one-tenth then x plus dx equals one hundred point one and the quantity x plus dx squared equals one hundred point one times one hundred point one equals ten thousand twenty point zero one now the last figure one is only one millionth part of the ten thousand and is utterly negligible so we may take ten thousand twenty without the little decimal at the end and this makes dy equals twenty and dy over dx equals twenty over point one equals two hundred which is still the same as two x case two try differentiating y equals x cubed in the same way we let y grow to y plus dy while x grows to x plus dx then we have y plus dy equals the quantity x plus dx cubed doing the cubing we obtain y plus dy equals x cubed plus 3x squared times dx plus 3x times dx squared plus dx cubed now we know that we may neglect small quantities of the second and third orders since when dy and dx are both made indefinitely small dx squared and dx cubed will become indefinitely smaller by comparison so regarding them as negligible we have left y plus dy equals x cubed plus 3x squared times dx but y equals x cubed and subtracting this we have dy equals 3x squared times dx and dy over dx equals 3x squared case three try differentiating y equals x raised to the fourth power starting as before by letting both y and x grow a bit we have y plus dy equals the quantity x plus dx raised to the fourth power working out the raising to the fourth power we get y plus dy equals x raised to the fourth power plus 4x cubed times dx 
plus 6x squared times dx squared, plus 4x times dx cubed, plus dx raised to the fourth power. Then striking out the terms containing all the higher powers of dx, as being negligible pi comparison, we have y plus dy equals x raised to the fourth power plus 4x cubed times dx. Subtracting the original y equals x to the fourth power, we have left dy equals 4x cubed times dx and dy over dx equals 4x cubed. Now all these cases are quite easy. Let us collect the results to see if we can infer any general rule. Put them in two columns, the values of y in one and the corresponding values found for dy over dx in the other. Thus, when y is x squared, dy over dx is 2x. When y is x cubed, dy over dx is 3x squared. When y is x raised to the fourth power, dy over dx is 4x cubed. Just look at these results. The operation of differentiating appears to have had the effect of diminishing the power of x by 1. For example, in the last case, reducing x raised to the fourth power to x cubed. And at the same time, multiplying by a number. The same number, in fact, which originally appeared as the power. Now, when you have once seen this, you might easily conjecture how the others will run. You would expect that differentiating x raised to the fifth power would give 5x raised to the fourth power, or differentiating x raised to the sixth power would give 6x raised to the fifth power. If you hesitate, try one of these and see whether the conjecture comes right. Try y equals x raised to the fifth power. Then, y plus dy equals the quantity x plus dx raised to the fifth power equals x raised to the fifth power plus 5x raised to the fourth power times dx plus 10x cubed times dx squared plus 10x squared times dx cubed plus 5x times dx raised to the fourth power plus dx raised to the fifth power. Neglecting all the terms containing small quantities of the higher orders we have left. y plus dy equals x raised to the fifth power plus 5x raised to the fourth power times dx. And subtracting y equals x raised to the fifth power leaves us dy equals 5x raised to the fourth power times dx, whence dy over dx equals 5x raised to the fourth power exactly as we supposed. Following out logically our observation, we should conclude that if we want to deal with any higher power, call it n, we could tackle it in the same way. Let y equal x raised to the n power, then we should expect to find that dy over dx equals n x raised to the n minus 1 power. For example, let n equal 8, then y equals x raised to the 8th power, and differentiating it would give dy over dx equals 8x raised to the 7th power. And indeed, the rule that differentiating x raised to the n power gives, as the result, n x raised to the n minus 1 power is true for all cases where n is a whole number and positive. Expanding the quantity x plus dx raised to the n power by the binomial theorem will at once show this. But the question whether it is true for cases where n has negative or fractional values requires further consideration. Case of a negative power. Let y equal x to the minus 2. Then proceed as before. 
y plus dy equals the quantity x plus dx to the minus 2 equals x to the minus 2 times the quantity 1 plus dx over x to the minus 2. Expanding this by the binomial theorem, see page 137, we get equals x to the minus 2 times the quantity 1 minus 2 dx over x plus 2 times the quantity 2 plus 1 over 1 times 2. That fraction times the quantity dx over x squared minus etc. equals x to the minus 2 minus 2x to the minus 3 times dx plus 3x to the minus 4 times dx squared minus 4x to the minus 5 times dx cubed plus etc. So neglecting the small quantities of higher orders of smallness we have y plus dy equals x to the minus 2 minus 2x to the minus 3 times dx. Subtracting the original y equals x to the minus 2 we find dy equals negative 2x to the minus 3 times dx dy over dx equals negative 2x to the minus 3. And this is still in accordance with the rule inferred above. Case of a fractional power. Let y equal x to the 1 half. Then, as before, y plus dy equals the quantity x plus dx to the 1 half equals x to the 1 half times the quantity 1 plus dx over x to the 1 half equals the square root of x plus 1 half times dx over the square root of x minus 1 eighth times dx squared over x times the square root of x plus terms with higher powers of dx. Subtracting the original y equals x to the one half and neglecting higher powers we have left dy equals one half times dx over the square root of x equals one half x to the minus one half times dx and dy over dx equals one half x to the minus one half. Agreeing with the general rule. Summary. Let us see how far we have got. We have arrived at the following rule. To differentiate x raised to the n power, multiply by the power and reduce the power by one so giving us n x raised to the n minus 1 power as the result. End of section 4. Section 5 of Calculus Made Easy. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Adam. Calculus Made Easy by Sylvanus P. Thompson. Section 5. Exercises 1. Differentiate the following 1. Y equals X to the power of 13. Answer dy by dx equals 13x to the power of 12. 2. y equals x to the power of negative 3 halves. Answer. 
dy by dx equals negative 3 halves x to the power of negative 5 halves. 3. y equals x to the power of 2a. Answer dy by dx equals 2ax to the power of 2a minus 1. 4. u equals t to the power of 2.4. Answer. du by dt equals 2.4 t to the power of 1.4. 5. Z equals the cube root of u. Answer. dz by du equals one-third u to the power of negative two-thirds. 6. Y equals the cube root of x to the negative 5. Answer. dy by dx equals negative five-thirds x to the power of negative eight-thirds. Seven. U equals the fifth root of one over x to the eighth. Answer. du by dx equals negative eight-fifths x to the power of negative thirteen-fifths. Eight y equals 2x to the power of a. Answer. dy by dx equals 2a x to the power of a minus 1. 9. y equals the qth root of x to the third. Answer. dy by dx equals 3 over q times x to the power of 3 minus q over q. 10. y equals the nth root of 1 over x to the m. Answer. dy by dx equals negative m over n x to the power of negative m plus n over n. You have now learned how to differentiate powers of x. How easy it is. End of section 5. Section 6 of Calculus Made Easy. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Chapter 5. Next Stage. What to do with constants. In our equations, we have regarded x as growing, and as a result of x being made to grow, y also changed its value and grew. We usually think of x as a quantity that we can vary, and, regarding the variation of x as a sort of cause, we consider the resulting variation of y as an effect. In other words, we regard the value of y as depending on that of x. Both x and y are variables, but x is the one that we operate upon, and y is the dependent variable. In all the preceding chapter, we have been trying to find out rules for the proportion which the dependent variation in y bears to the variation independently made in x. Our next step is to find out what effect on the process of differentiating is caused by the presence of constants, that is, of numbers which don't change when x or y change their values. Added constants. Let us begin with some simple case of an added constant, thus, let y equal x cubed plus 5. Just as before, let us suppose x to grow to x plus dx and y to grow to y plus dy. Then y plus dy equals the sum 
of x plus dx cubed plus 5 equals x cubed plus 3x squared times dx plus 3x times dx squared plus dx cubed plus 5. Neglecting the small quantities of higher orders, this becomes y plus dy equals x cubed plus 3x squared times dx plus 5. Subtract the original y equals x cubed plus 5, and we have left dy equal 3x squared dx. dy over dx equals 3x squared. So the 5 has quite disappeared. It added nothing to the growth of x and does not enter into the differential coefficient. If we had put 7 or 700 or any other number instead of 5, it would have disappeared. So if we take the letter a or b or c to represent any constant, it will simply disappear when we differentiate. If the additional constant had been of negative value, such as negative 5 or negative b, it would equally have disappeared. Multiplied constants. Take as a simple experiment this case. Let y equal 7x squared. Then on proceeding as before, we get y plus dy equals 7 times the quantity of x plus dx squared equals 7 left bracket x squared plus 2x times dx plus the quantity dx squared right bracket equals 7x squared plus 14x times dx plus 7 times the quantity dx squared. Then, subtracting the original, y equals 7x squared, and neglecting the last term, we have dy equals 14x times dx. dy over dx equals 14x. Let us illustrate this example by working out the graphs of the equation y equals 7x squared and dy over dx equals 14x by assigning to x a set of successive values 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. and finding the corresponding values of y and of dy over dx. These values we tabulate as follows. When x is 0, y is 0, dy over dx is 0. When x is 1, y is 7, dy over dx is 14. When x is 2, y is 28, dy over dx is 28. When x is 3, y is 63, dy over dx 42. When x is 4, y is 112, dy over dx is 56. When x is 5, y is 175, dy over dx is 70. When x is negative 1, y is 7, dy over dx is negative 14. When x is negative 2, y is 28, dy over dx is a negative 28. When x is negative 3, y is 63, dy over dx is negative 42. Now, Plot these values to some convenient scale, and we obtain the two curves of figure 6 and 6a. Figure 6, graph of y equals 7x squared. x-axis is scaled negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. y-axis scaled 0, 50, 100. 150, 200, with a curve through 0, 0, 1, 7, 2, 28, 3, 63, 4, and 1, 12, 5, and 1, 75, negative 1 and 7, negative 2 and 28, negative 3, 63. Figure 6a. Graph of dy over dx equals 14x. 
x-axis scaled at negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. dy over dx axis scaled negative 50, 0, 50, 100, 150. With a curve through points 0, 0, 1, 14, 2, 28, 3, 42, 4, 56, 5, 70, negative 1, negative 14, negative 2, negative 28, negative 3, negative 42. Carefully compare the two figures and verify by inspection that the height of the ordinate of the derived curve, figure 6a, is proportional to the slope of the original curve, figure 6, at the corresponding value of x. Note, see page 76 about slopes of curves. To the left of the origin, where the original curve slopes negatively, that is downward from left to right, the corresponding ordinates of the derived curve are negative. Now, if we look back at page 18, we shall see that simply differentiating x squared gives us 2x, so that the differential coefficient of 7x squared is just 7 times as big as that of x squared. If we had taken 8x squared, the differential coefficient would have come out 8 times as great as that of x squared. If we put y equals ax squared, we shall get dy over dx equals a times 2x. If we had begun with y equals ax to the nth power, we should have had dy over dx equals a times nx to the n minus 1 power, so that any mere multiplication by a constant reappears as a mere multiplication when the thing is differentiated, and what is true about multiplication is equally true about division. For if, in the example above, we had taken as the constant 1 seventh instead of 7, we should have had the same 1 seventh come out in the result after differentiation. Some further examples. The following further examples, fully worked out, will enable you to master completely the process of differentiation as applied to ordinary algebraic expressions, and enable you to work out by yourself the examples given at the end of this chapter. Number 1. Differentiate. y equals x to the fifth power over 7 minus 3 over 5. 3 over 5 is an added constant and vanishes. See page 25. We may then write at once dy over dx equals 1 seventh times 5 times x to the 5 minus 1 power, or dy over dx equals 5 seventh times x to the 4th power. Number 2. Differentiate y equals a square root of x minus one-half square root of a. The term one-half square root of a vanishes, being an added constant, and as a square root of x in the index form is written ax to the one-half power, we have dy over dx equals a times one-half times x to the one-half minus one power equals a over two times x to the negative one-half power, or dy over dx equals a over two times the square root of x. Three, if ay plus bx equals by minus ax plus the sum of x plus y times the square root of a squared minus b squared, find the differential coefficient of y with respect to x. As a rule, an expression of this kind will need a little more knowledge than we have acquired so far. It is, however, always worthwhile to try whether the expression can be put in a simpler form. First we must try to bring it into the form y equals some expression involving x only. The expression may be written 
the quantity a minus b times y plus the quantity a plus b times x equals the quantity x plus y times the square root of a squared minus b squared. Squaring, we get the quantity a minus b squared times y squared plus the quantity a plus b squared times x squared plus 2 times the quantity a plus b times the quantity a minus b times xy equals the quantity x squared plus y squared plus 2xy times the quantity a squared minus b squared, which simplifies to quantity a minus b squared y squared plus quantity a plus b squared x squared equals x squared times the quantity of a squared minus b squared plus y squared times the quantity of a squared minus b squared or open bracket quantity a minus b squared minus quantity a squared minus b squared close bracket y squared equals open bracket quantity a squared minus b squared minus quantity a plus b squared close bracket x squared that is 2b times the quantity of b minus a times y squared equals negative 2b times the quantity of b plus a times x squared. Hence, y equals the square root of a plus b over a minus b times x, and dy over dx equals the square root of a plus b over a minus b. Number 4. The volume of a cylinder of radius r and height h is given by the formula uppercase v equals pi r squared h. Find the rate of variation of volume with the radius when r equals 5.5 inches and h equals 20 inches. If r equal h, Find the dimensions of the cylinder so that a change of 1 inch in radius causes a change of 400 cubic inches in the volume. The rate of variation, uppercase v, with regard to r is d uppercase v over dr equals 2 pi r h. If r equal 5.5 inches and h equal 20 inch, this becomes 690.8. It means that a change of radius of 1 inch will cause a change of volume of 690.8 cubic inch. This can be easily verified for the volumes with r equal 5 and r equal 6 are 1570 cubic inch and 2260.8 cubic inch respectively and 2260.8 minus 1570 equals 690.8. Also, if r equal h, dv over dr equals 2 pi r squared equals 400, and r equals h equals the square root of 400 divided by 2 pi equals 7.98 inches. Number 5. The reading theta of Faraday's radiation parameter is related to the centigrade temperature T of the observed body by the relation theta over theta sub 1 equals the quantity T over T sub 1 to the fourth power, where theta sub 1 is the reading corresponding to a known temperature T sub 1 of the observed body compare the sensitiveness of the parameter at temperatures 800 degrees centigrade, 1000 degrees centigrade, 1200 degrees centigrade, given that it read 25 when the temperature was 1000 degrees centigrade. The sensitiveness is the rate of variation of the reading with the temperature, that is, d theta over dt. The formula may be written, theta equals theta sub 1 over t sub 1 to the fourth power times t to the fourth power equals 
25 t to the fourth power over 1000 to the fourth power. And we have d theta over dt equals 100 t cubed over 1000 to the fourth power equals t cubed over 10 billion. When t equals 800, 1000, and 1200, we get d theta over dt equals 0 0.0512, 0 0.1, and 0 0.1728, respectively. The sensitiveness is approximately doubled from 800 degrees to 1000 degrees and becomes three quarters as great again up to 1200 degrees. End of section 6. Section 7 of Calculus Made Easy. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Calculus Made Easy by Sylvanus P. Thompson. Section 7. Exercises 2. Differentiate the following. Number 1 y equals ax cubed plus 6. Answer. dy over dx equals 3ax squared. Number 2. y equals 13x to the 3 halves power minus c. Answer. dy over dx equals 13 times 3 halves x to the 1 half power. Number 3. y equals 12x to the 1 half power plus c to the one-half power. Answer. dy over dx equals 6x to the negative one-half power. Number 4. y equals c to the one-half power times x to the one-half power. Answer. dy over dx equals one half c to the one half power times x to the negative one half power. Number five. U equals a z to the nth power minus one over c. Answer du over dz equals a n over c times z to the n minus 1 power. Number 6. y equals 1.18 t squared plus 22 Point four. Answer. dy over dt equals 2.36t. Make up some other examples for yourself and try your hand at differentiating them. Number 7. If L sub t and L sub 0 be the length of a rod of iron at the temperatures of T degree centigrade and zero degree centigrade, respectively, then L sub T equals L sub zero, left parentheses, one plus zero point zero 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 one two T, right parentheses. Find the change of length of the rod per degree centigrade. Answer. 
dl sub t over dt equals zero point zero 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 one two times l sub zero number eight it has been found that if c be the candle power of an incandescent electric lamp and capital v be the voltage c equals a capital v to the b power where a and b are constants find the rate of change of the candle power with the voltage and calculate the change of candle power per volt at 80 100 and 120 volts in the case of a lamp for which a equals 0 0.5 times 10 to the negative 10 power and b equals 6 answer d uppercase c over d uppercase v equals a b uppercase v to the b minus 1 power 0 0.98 3.00 and 7.47 candle power per volt, respectively. Number 9. The frequency n of vibration of a string of diameter, capital D, length, capital L, and specific gravity, sigma, stretched with the force, capital T, is given by n equals 1 over capital D capital L times the square root of G capital T over pi sigma. Find the rate of change of the frequency when capital D capital L sigma and capital T are varied singly. Answer dn over D capital D equals negative 1 over capital L capital D squared times the square root of G capital T over pi sigma. dn over D capital L equals negative 1 over capital D capital L squared times square root of G capital T over pi sigma dn over d sigma equals negative 1 over 2 capital D capital L times the square root of g capital T over pi sigma cubed. dn over d capital T equals 1 over 2 capital D capital L times the square root of g over pi sigma capital T. Number 10. The greatest external pressure, capital P, which a tube can support without collapsing, is given by capital P equals left parentheses 2 capital E over 1 minus sigma squared end parentheses times t cubed over capital D cubed where capital E and sigma are constants t is the thickness of the tube and capital D is its diameter this formula assumes that 4t is small compared to capital D compare the rate at which capital P varies for a small change of thickness and for a small change of diameter taking place separately. Answer. Rate of change of capital P when T varies over rate of change of capital P when capital D varies equals negative capital D over T. Number 11. Find from first principles, 
the rate at which the following vary with respect to a change in radius a the circumference of a circle of radius r b the area of a circle of radius r c the lateral area of cone of slant dimension l d the volume of a cone of radius r and height h e the area of a sphere of radius r f the volume of a sphere of radius r answers a 2 pi b 2 pi r c pi l d 2 thirds pi r h e 8 pi r f 4 pi r squared number 12 the length capital l of an iron rod at the temperature capital t being given by capital l equals l sub t left bracket 1 plus 0 0.00012 left parentheses capital t minus t right parentheses right bracket where l sub t is the length at the temperature t find the rate of variation of the diameter capital d of an iron tire suitable for being shrunk on a wheel when the temperature capital t varies answer d capital d over d capital t equals zero point zero 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 one two l sub t over pi end of section seven section eight of calculus made easy this is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Calculus Made Easy by Sylvanus P. Thompson. Chapter 6 Sums, Differences, Products, and Quotients. We have learned how to differentiate simple algebraical functions such as x squared plus c or ax to the fourth power and we have now to consider how to tackle the sum of two or more functions for instance let y equal the quantity x squared plus c plus the quantity ax to the fourth power plus b what will its dy over dx be how are we to go to work on this new job the answer to this question is quite simple just differentiate them one after the other thus dy over dx equal 2x plus 4ax cubed if you have any doubt whether this is right try a more general case working it by first principles and this is the way let y equal u plus v where u is any function of x and v any other function of x then letting x increase to x plus dx y will increase to y plus dy and u will increase to u plus du and v to v plus dv and we shall have y plus dy equals u plus du plus v plus dv subtracting the original y equal u plus v we get dy equal du plus dv and dividing through by dx we get dy over dx equal du over dx plus dv over dx this justifies the procedure you differentiate each function separately and add the results so if now we take the example of the preceding paragraph and put in the values of the two functions 
we shall have using the notation shown page 16 dy over dx equal d times the quantity x squared plus c all over dx plus d times the quantity ax to the fourth power plus b all over dx equal 2x plus 4ax cubed exactly as before if there were three functions of x which we may call u v and w so that y equal u plus v plus w then dy over dx equal du over dx plus dv over dx plus dw over dx as for subtraction it follows at once for if the function v had itself had a negative sign its differential coefficient would also be negative so that by differentiating y equal u minus v we should get dy over dx equal du over dx minus dv over dx but when we come to do with products the thing is not quite so simple suppose we were asked to differentiate the expression y equal the quantity x squared plus c times the quantity ax to the fourth power plus b what are we to do the result will certainly not be 2x times 4ax cubed for it is easy to see that neither c times ax to the fourth power nor x squared times b would have been taken into that product now there are two ways in which we may go to work first way do the multiplying first and having worked it out then differentiate accordingly we multiply together x squared plus c and ax to the fourth power plus b this gives ax to the sixth power plus acx to the fourth power plus bx squared plus bc now differentiate and we get dy over dx equal 6ax to the fifth power plus 4acx cubed plus 2bx second way go back to first principles and consider the equation y equal u times v where u is one function of x and v is another function of x then if x grows to be x plus dx and y to y plus dy and u becomes u plus du and v becomes v plus dv we shall have y plus dy equal the quantity u plus du times the quantity v plus dv equal u times v plus u times dv plus v times du plus du times dv now du times dv is a small quantity of the second order of smallness and therefore in the limit may be discarded leaving y plus dy equal u times v plus u times dv plus v times du then subtracting the original y equal u times v we have left dy equal u times dv plus v times du and dividing through by dx we get the result dy over dx equal u times dv over dx plus v times du over dx this shows that our instructions will be as follows to differentiate the product of two functions multiply each function by the differential coefficient of the other and add together the two products so obtained you should note that this process amounts to the following treat u as a constant while you differentiate v then treat v as a constant while you differentiate u and the whole differential coefficient dy over dx will be the sum of these two treatments now having found this rule apply it to the concrete example which was considered above we want to differentiate the product quantity x squared plus c times quantity ax to the fourth power plus b 
call quantity x squared plus c equal u and quantity ax to the fourth power plus b equal v. Then, by the general rule just established, we may write dy over dx equal quantity x squared plus c times d times the quantity ax to the fourth power plus b all over dx plus quantity ax to the fourth power plus b times d times the quantity x squared plus c all over dx equal quantity x squared plus c times 4ax cubed plus quantity ax to the fourth power plus b times 2x equal 4ax to the fifth power plus 4acx cubed plus 2ax to the fifth power plus 2bx dy over dx equal 6ax to the fifth power plus 4acx cubed plus 2bx exactly as before lastly we have to differentiate quotients think of this example y equal bx to the fifth power plus c over x squared plus a. In such a case, it is no use to try to work out the division beforehand because x squared plus a will not divide into bx to the fifth power plus c. Neither have they any common factor. So there is nothing for it but to go back to first principles and find a rule. So we will put y equal u over v where u and v are two different functions of the independent variable x. Then, when x becomes x plus dx, y will become y plus dy, and u will become u plus du, and v will become v plus dv. So then, y plus dy equal u plus du over v plus dv. Now, perform the algebraic division thus. v plus dv divided into u plus du equals u over v plus du over v minus u times dv over v squared by multiplying u over v by v plus dv and subtract the product u plus u times dv over v equals du minus u times dv over v. Subtract the product of v plus dv times du over v equals du plus du times dv over v equals negative u times dv over v minus du times dv over v. Subtract the product of v plus dv times u times dv over v squared equals negative u times dv over v minus u times dv times dv over v squared equals negative du times dv over v plus u times dv times dv over v squared. As both these remainders are small quantities of the second order, they may be neglected, and the division may stop here, since any further remainder would be of still smaller magnitudes. So we have got y plus dy equal u over v plus du over v minus u times dv over v squared, which may be written equal u over v plus v times du minus u times dv all over v squared. Now subtract the original y equals u over v and we have left dy equal v times du minus u times dv all over v squared. Whence dy over dx equal v times du over dx minus u times dv over dx all over v squared. This gives us our instructions 
as to how to differentiate a quotient of two functions. Multiply the divisor function by the differential coefficient of the dividend function, then multiply the dividend function by the differential coefficient of the divisor function, and subtract. Lastly, divide by the square of the divisor function. Going back to our example, y equal bx to the fifth power plus c over x squared plus a. Write bx to the fifth power plus c equal u and x squared plus a equal v. Then dy over dx equal quantity x squared plus a times d times the quantity bx to the fifth power plus c all over dx minus the quantity bx to the fifth power plus c times d times the quantity x squared plus a all over dx all over the quantity squared x squared plus a equals the quantity x squared plus a times 5bx to the fourth power minus the quantity bx to the fifth power plus c times 2x all over the quantity squared x squared plus a dy over dx equal 3bx to the sixth power plus 5abx to the fourth power minus 2cx all over the quantity squared x squared plus a answer the working out of quotients is often tedious but there's nothing difficult about it some further examples fully worked out are given hereafter one differentiate y equal a over b squared times x cubed minus a squared over b times x plus a squared over b squared being a constant a squared over b squared vanishes and we have dy over dx equal a over b squared times 3 times x to the 3 minus 1 power minus a squared over b times 1 times x to the 1 minus 1 power but x to the 1 minus 1 power equal x to the 0 power equal 1 so we get dy over dx equal 3a over b squared times x squared minus a squared over b. 2. Differentiate y equal 2a times the square root of bx cubed minus 3b times the cube root of a all over x minus 2 times the square root ab. Putting x in the index form, we get y equal 2a times the square root of b times x to the 3 half power minus 3b times the cube root of a times x to the minus 1 power minus 2 times the square root of ab. Now, dy over dx equal 2a times the square root of b times 3 half times x to the 3 half minus 1 power minus 3b times the cube root of a times negative 1 times x to the negative 1 minus 1 power. Or dy over dx equal 3a times the square root of bx plus 3b times the cube root of a all over x squared. 3. Differentiate z equal 1.8 times the cube root of 1 over theta squared minus 4.4 .4 over the fifth root of theta minus 27 degree. This may be written z equal 1.8 times theta to the negative 2 third power minus 4.4 .4 theta to the negative 1 fifth power minus 27 degrees. The 27 degrees vanishes and we have dz over d theta equal 1.8 times negative 2 thirds times theta to the negative 2 third minus 1 power minus 4.4 .4 times negative 1 fifth times theta to the negative 1 fifth minus 1 power. Or 
dz over d theta equal negative 1.2 theta to the negative 5 third power plus 0 0.88 theta to the negative 6 fifths power. Or dz over d theta equal 0 0.88 over the fifth root of theta to the sixth power minus 1.2 over the cubed root of theta to the fifth power. 4. Differentiate v equal the quantity cubed 3t squared minus 1.2t plus 1. A direct way of doing this will be explained later. See page 66. But we can nevertheless manage it now without any difficulty. Developing the cube, we get v equal 27t to the sixth power minus 32.4t to the fifth power plus 39.96t to the fourth power minus 23.328t cubed minus 13.32t squared minus 3.6t plus 1. Hence, dv over dt equal 162t to the fifth power minus 162t to the fourth power plus 159.84t cubed minus 69.984t squared plus 26.64t minus 3.6. 5. Differentiate y equal quantity 2x minus 3 times the quantity squared x plus 1. dy over dx equal the quantity 2x minus 3 times d times the quantity of quantity x plus 1 times x plus 1 all over dx plus the quantity squared x plus 1 times d times the quantity 2x minus 3 all over dx equal the quantity 2x minus 3 times open bracket quantity x plus 1 times d times the quantity x plus 1 all over dx plus the quantity x plus 1 times d times the quantity x plus 1 all over dx close bracket plus the quantity squared x plus 1 times d times the quantity 2x minus 3 all over dx equal 2 times the quantity x plus 1 times the quantity quantity 2x minus 3 plus quantity x plus 1 equals 2 times the quantity x plus 1 times the quantity 3x minus 2. Or, more simply, multiply out and then differentiate. 6. Differentiate y equal 0.5x cubed times the quantity x minus 3. dy over dx equal 0 0.5 times the quantity x cubed times d times the quantity x minus 3 all over dx plus the quantity x minus 3 times d times x cubed all over dx equal 0 0.5 times the quantity x cubed plus quantity x minus 3 times 3x squared equal 2x cubed minus 4.5x squared. Same remarks as for preceding example. 7. Differentiate w equal the quantity theta plus 1 over theta times the quantity of square root of theta plus 1 over the square root of theta. This may be written w equal the quantity theta plus theta to the negative one power times the quantity theta to the one half power plus theta to the negative one half power. dw over d theta equal quantity theta plus theta to the negative one power times d times the quantity theta to the one half power plus theta to the negative one half power all over d theta plus quantity theta to the one-half power plus theta to the negative one-half power times d times 
quantity theta plus theta to the negative one power all over d theta equal quantity theta plus theta to the negative one power times quantity one half theta to the negative one half power minus one half theta to the negative three half power plus the quantity theta to the one half power plus theta to the negative one half power times one minus theta to the negative two power equal one half times the quantity theta to the one half power plus theta to the negative three half power minus theta to the negative one half power minus theta to the negative five half power plus the quantity theta to the one half power plus theta to the negative one half power minus theta to the negative three half power minus theta to the negative five half power equal three half times the quantity square root of theta minus one over the square root of theta to the fifth power plus one half times the quantity one over the square root of theta minus one over the square root of theta cubed this again could be obtained more simply by multiplying the two factors first and differentiating afterwards this is not however always possible see for instance page 170 example 8 in which the rule for differentiating a product must be used 8 differentiate y equal a over 1 plus a times the square root of x plus a squared x dy over dx equal the quantity 1 plus ax to the 1 half power plus a squared times x times 0 minus a times d times the quantity 1 plus ax to the 1 half power plus a squared x all over dx all over quantity squared 1 plus a times the square root of x plus a squared x equal negative a times the quantity 1 half ax to the negative 1 half plus a squared all over the quantity squared 1 plus ax to the 1 half power plus a squared x 9 differentiate y equal x squared over x squared plus 1 dy over dx equal the quantity x squared plus 1 times 2x minus x squared times 2x all over the quantity squared x squared plus 1 equal 2x over the quantity squared x squared plus 1 10 differentiate y equal a plus the square root of x all over a minus the square root of x in the index form y equal a plus x to the one half power all over a minus x to the one half power dy over dx equal the quantity a minus x to the one half power times the quantity one half x to the negative one half power minus the quantity a plus x to the one half power times the quantity negative one half x to the negative one half power all over the quantity squared a minus x to the one half power equal a minus x to the one half power plus a plus x to the one half power all over two times the quantity squared a minus x to the one half power times x to the one half power hence dy over dx equal a over the quantity squared a minus the square root of x times the square root of x 11 differentiate theta equals 1 minus a times the cubed root of t squared all over 1 plus a times the square root of t cubed now theta equals 1 minus a t to the 2 thirds power all over 1 plus a t to the 3 half power d theta over dt equal the quantity 
1 plus at to the 3 half power times the quantity negative 2 third at to the negative 1 third power minus the quantity 1 minus at to the 2 third power times 3 half at to the 1 half power all over the quantity squared 1 plus at to the 3 half power equal 5a squared times the sixth root of t to the seventh power minus 4a over the cubed root of t minus 9a times the square root of t all over 6 times the quantity squared 1 plus a times the square root of t cubed 12 a reservoir of square cross-section has sides sloping at an angle of 45 degrees with the vertical. The side of the bottom is 200 feet. Find an expression for the quantity pouring in or out when the depth of water varies by one foot. Hence find, in gallons, the quantity withdrawn hourly when the depth is reduced from 14 to 10 feet in 24 hours. The volume of a frustum of pyramid of height uppercase h and of bases uppercase a and lowercase a is uppercase v equals uppercase h over three times the quantity uppercase a plus lowercase a plus the square root of uppercase a times lowercase a it is easily seen that that the slope being 45 degrees if the depth be lowercase h the length of the side of the square surface of the water is 200 plus 2 lowercase h feet so that the volume of water is lowercase h over 3 times the quantity 200 squared plus the quantity squared 200 plus 2 lowercase h plus 200 times the quantity 200 plus 2 times lowercase h equals 40,000 lowercase h plus 400 h squared plus 4 h cubed over 3. d uppercase v over d lowercase h equal 40,000 plus 800 h plus 4 h squared equal cubic feet per foot of depth variation. The mean level from 14 to 10 feet is 12 feet. When lowercase h equals 12, d times uppercase v over d over lowercase h equals 50,176 cubic feet. Gallons per hour corresponding to a change of the depth of 4 feet in 24 hours equals 4 times 50,176 times 6.25 all over 24 equal 52,267 gallons. 13. The absolute pressure in atmospheres, uppercase P, of saturated steam at the temperature T degrees centigrade is given by Dulong as being uppercase P equals the quantity to the fifth power 40 plus T over 140. As long as T is above 80 degrees, Find the rate of variation of the pressure with the temperature at 100 degrees centigrade. Expand the numerator by the binomial theorem, see page 137. Uppercase P equals 1 over 140 to the fifth power times the quantity 40 to the fifth power plus 5 times 40 to the fourth power T plus 10 times 40 cubed times T squared plus 10 times 40 squared t cubed plus 5 times 40 t to the fourth power plus t to the fifth power. Hence, d uppercase p over dt equals 1 over 537,824 times 10 to the fifth power times the quantity 5 times 40 to the fourth power plus 20 times 40 cubed t plus 30 times 40 squared t squared plus 20 times 40 t cubed plus 5 t to the fourth power. When t equals 100, this becomes 0 0.036 atmosphere per degree centigrade change of temperature. End of section 8.
Section 9 of Calculus Made Easy. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Paul King, Mississauga, Ontario, pjk.scripts.mit.edu, forward slash pkj. Calculus Made Easy by Sylvanus P. Thompson, Section 9. Exercises 3. Exercise 1. Differentiate. Question A. U equals 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial plus dot dot dot. Answer. 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 6 plus x4 over 24 plus dot dot dot. Question B. Y equals AX squared plus BX plus C. Answer. 2AX plus B. Question C. Y equals X plus A quantity squared. Answer. 2X plus 2A. Question D. Y equals X plus A quantity cubed. Answer. 3X squared plus 6AX plus 3A squared. Question 2. If W equals AT plus 1 half BT squared, find DW by DT. Answer. DW by DT equals A minus BT. Question 3. Find the differential coefficient of y equals the quantity x plus the square root of minus 1 multiplied by the quantity x minus the square root of minus 1. Answer. dy by dx equals 2x. Question 4. Differentiate. y equals open bracket 197x minus 34x squared close bracket multiplied by open bracket 7 plus 22x minus 83x cubed close bracket answer 14110x to the fourth minus 65404 x cubed minus 2244x squared plus 8192x plus 1379 question 5 if x equals open bracket y plus 3 close bracket multiplied by open bracket y plus 5 close bracket find dx by dy answer dx by dy equals 2y plus 8 Question 6. Differentiate y equals 1.3709x multiplied by open bracket 112.6 plus 45.202x squared close bracket. Answer 185.9022654x squared plus 154.36334. Question 7. Find the differential coefficients of y equals the quantity 2x plus 3 divided by the quantity 3x plus 2. Answer. Negative 5 divided by open bracket 3x plus 2 close bracket all squared. Question 8. Find the differential coefficients of y equals the quantity 1 plus x plus 2x squared plus 3x cubed divided by the quantity 1 plus x plus 2x squared. Answer. The quantity 6x to the fourth plus 6x cubed plus 9x squared all divided by open bracket 1 plus x plus 2x squared close bracket all squared question 9 
find the differential coefficients of y equals the quantity ax plus b divided by the quantity cx plus d. Answer. The quantity ad minus bc divided by open bracket cx plus d close bracket all squared. Question 10. y equals the quantity x to the power n plus a divided by the quantity x to the power of minus n plus b. Answer. a n x to the power of negative n minus 1 plus b n x to the power of n minus 1 plus 2 n x to the power of minus 1 all divided by open bracket x to the power of minus n plus b close bracket all squared. Question 11. The temperature T of the filament of an incandescent electric lamp is connected to the current passing through the lamp by the relation C equals A plus BT plus CT squared. Find an expression giving the variation of the current corresponding to a variation of temperature. Answer. B plus 2CT. Question 12. The following formulae have been proposed to express the relation between the electric resistance R of a wire at the temperature T degrees Celsius and the resistance R0 of the same wire at 0 degrees centigrade, A, B, C being constants. R equals R0 times open bracket 1 plus AT plus BT squared close bracket. R equals R naught times open bracket 1 plus AT plus B times the square root of T, close bracket. R equals R naught times open bracket 1 plus AT plus BT squared, close bracket, raised to the power minus 1. Find the rate of variation of the resistance with regard to temperature as given by each of these formulae. Answer. R naught times open bracket a plus two b t close bracket. R naught times open bracket a plus b divided by two root t close bracket. Negative R naught times open bracket a plus two b t close bracket divided by open bracket one plus a t plus b t squared close bracket squared. Or R squared times open bracket a plus 2bt close bracket divided by R naught. Question 13. The electromotive force E of a certain type of standard cell has been found to vary with the temperature T according to the relation E equals 1.4340 times open bracket 1 minus 0 0.000814 times open bracket T minus 15 close bracket plus 0 0.000007 times open bracket T minus 15 close bracket squared close bracket volts. Find the change of electromotive force per degree at 15 degrees, 20 degrees, and 25 degrees. Answer. 1.4340 multiplied by open bracket 0.000014t minus 0.001024 close bracket negative 0.00117 negative 0.00107 and finally negative 0 0.00097 question 14 the electromotive force necessary to maintain an electric arc of length L with a current of intensity I has been found by Mrs. Ayrton to be E equals A plus BL plus the quantity C plus KL all divided by I, where A, K, B, and C are constants. Find an expression for the variation of the electromotive force A with regard to the length of the arc and B with regard to the strength of the current. Answers. DE by DL equals B plus K over I. 
and de by di equals negative c minus kl all divided by i squared. End of section 9. Section 10 of Calculus Made Easy. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Paul King, Mississauga, Ontario. pjk.scripts.mit.edu forward slash pkj. Calculus Made Easy by Sylvanus P. Thompson. Section 10. Chapter 7. Successive Differentiation. Let us try the effect of repeating several times over the operation of differentiating a function. Begin with a concrete case. Let y equal x to the power 5. First differentiation, 5x to the power 4. Second differentiation, 5 times 4 times x to the power 3. That's equal to 20x cubed. Third differentiation, 5 times 4 times 3 times x squared which is equal to 60x squared. Fourth differentiation, 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times x, which is 120x. Fifth differentiation, 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 equals 120. Sixth differentiation, 0. There is a certain notation with which we already are acquainted, used by some writers that is very convenient. This is to employ the general symbol f of x for any function of x. Here the symbol f followed by a pair of brackets is read as function of without saying what particular function is meant. So the statement y equals f of x merely tells us that y is a function of x. It may be x squared or ax to the n or cosine of x or any other complicated function of x. The corresponding symbol for the differential coefficient is f prime of x, which is simpler to write than dy by dx. This is called the derived function of x. Suppose we differentiate over again. We shall get the second derived function or second differential coefficient which is denoted by f double prime of x and so on. Now let's generalize. Let y equal f of x equal x to the power n. First differentiation, f prime of x equals n times x to the power n minus 1. Second differentiation, f double prime of x equals n times n minus 1 times x to the power n minus 2. Third differentiation, f triple prime of x equals n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times x to the power n minus 3. Fourth differentiation, f quadruple prime of x equals n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3 times x to the power n minus 4, etc., etc. But this is not the only way of indicating successive differentiations. For if the original function be y equals f of x, once differentiating gives dy by dx equals f prime of x. Twice differentiating gives d by dy by dx by dx equals f double prime of x. And this is more conveniently written as d squared y by dx quantity squared, or more usually as d squared y by dx squared. Similarly, we may write as the result of thrice differentiating d cubed y by dx cubed, or f triple prime of x. Examples. Now let us try y equals f of x equals 7x to the power 4, plus 3.5 x to the power 3 minus 1 half x squared plus x minus 2. dy by dx, that's f prime of x, which is 28 x cubed plus 10 and a half x squared minus x plus 1. d squared y by dx squared equals f double prime of x equals 84 x squared plus 21 x minus 1. d cubed y by dx cubed equals the third derivative of x which is equal to 168x plus 21. d to the fourth power y plus dx to the power 4 is the fourth derivative of x, which is equal to 168. And finally, d to the fifth y by dx to the fifth is the fifth derivative, which is 0. 
In a similar manner, if y equals phi of x equals 3x times the quantity x squared minus 4, then phi prime of x equals dy by dx equals 3 times the quantity x times 2x plus the quantity x squared minus 4 times 1, which equals 3 times the quantity 3x squared minus 4. Phi double prime of x is equal to d squared y by dx squared, which is equal to 3 times 6x, which is equal to 18x. Phi triple prime of x, which is equal to d cubed y by dx cubed, is equal to 18. And the fourth derivative, phi quadruple prime of x, is equal to d to the fourth y by dx.